Welcome back to Broken and Brilliant. I'm Carrie O'Toole with Carrie O'Toole Ministries, and I have an awesome guest today. This is Ryan Dobson. Hi, Ryan. How you doing? Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks so much. I've been very excited about this. Me too. So we the met. Third time's a charm, by the way. It too. is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the first time I, I don't remember it was your dad's birthday. Yeah, there was some. Sc- I think it was his birthday party. And yeah. then the second time, <laughs> a freak. Freak. It's Colorado. So, you know, everybody says, oh, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. <laughs> My thing in Colorado is if you don't like the weather, too bad. <laughs> that's it. That's Colorado spring to me. I get so angry about it. I'm driving up in the springs where I live, which is about an hour. It's not right. far. No. Totally sunny. I get 20 minutes in and we're at a standstill with freezing rain. Then it turns to hail and then it's snowing. Well, and you said there's like lightning, thunder, thunder, snow. lightning. Oh yeah. <laughs> snowing. I'm fine with. And I'm a thunder, we're down lightning, here, rainstorm. Like, I'm fine with Yeah, the thunder snow. It's <laughs> I grew up in California. So we're all ready for, for you down here. And you're texting me say it not while you're driving, but you're, you're texting oh, me. I say, texting drive. <laughs> yeah. I well, should don't, not don't say especially that. Especially should have been doing that while it's, I, I had to send video because I knew, I sent the video to my wife because I was like, no one's going to believe this. Because I know if I could get 20 miles ahead, I'll be fine. Right. But it literally stood still. Like, I yeah. barely got off the freeway. Well, you sat in it for 10, 20 minutes and you're like, ah, this is a bust. We need to oh. reschedule this. So I'm glad you're back. Yeah, me too. Yeah, all that to say, <laughs> good to be back. Good That's to be, right. Good to be here. That's yeah. right. Well, Ryan, we met in Florida a couple weeks ago at a conference. Ken Davis, Dan Miller, Danny... (laughs) I was was going to say Danny Ortley because we know Danny Ortley and it's not. Danny Uh, Ortley came here and played on my podcast. Yes, now I I totally lost his name, but I see your face, Danny. We love you. Joy Grove will be... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I loved it. I was... It was for entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, people in like a mid... And for me, it was perfect, mid-career transition. Yes. I'm 45, I'm about to turn 46, I quit my job in January. Right. And honestly, honestly, normally I would never say, just quit your job, you know, unless you've got another job to go to. And I didn't, but it was just time to do that. And. Yeah. I was in negotiations with the board and there's all this stuff going on, but I knew the second I decided, I thought I got to call Ken Davis. I got to call Ken Davis. Cause I went to the score conference, which used to be something yeah, I different. Did too. I went, yeah. Ye- I mean, I went, Ooh, close to 20 years ago. Wow. I think I'm way behind. I just went last fall. So <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was amazing. It was, uh, and this is what I tell people. People always ask, you know, what, What's it like? I learned as much in that week, almost as much as I learned in three years of studying communications in college. Wow. I mean, it was so profound, especially for speakers. Uh, If people are interested in becoming a speaker, being a speaker, most speakers tend to judge how well they're doing by audience reaction. And as I've been doing this for a long time now, 26, seven years, um, some crowds don't react no matter what you're saying. Right. And then you, cause I've watched, I just saw a guy speak recently and he kept circling his issue. He wasn't getting the response he wanted. He wasn't getting the response that he normally so he kept gets coming back and he kept going back around trying to get to that response and it wasn't happening. And score for me, it gives you <clears throat> really the tools and the layout to design a well-crafted speech. Well, what it did for me was I started realizing I I know why I'm speaking and what I'm speaking about, but mm-hmm. sometimes I forgot who I'm speaking to yeah. and what they need. And mm-hmm. it's like, duh, you should just know that. But totally. if you don't just know that, what is it you're, why are you doing this? Yeah. What's, what's the, and a lot of times the reaction thing, my message a lot of times is kind of a difficult message. Yeah. And, um, Sometimes you don't get the reaction because people don't quite know what to do. They have to take it home and process totally. it. It's not just an instant unless you have yeah. a whole group of extroverts who are right <laughs> sobbing. Well, it did the same thing for me. It was it taught me I'd hit my target even if I wasn't getting the response. Right. If the if the spotlight was too bright, if they wouldn't turn on the house lights, if I couldn't see the audience, right. If I couldn't ju- judge facial expressions, if I couldn't hear them, you've prepared well enough that you know. Well, I know I'm hitting my mark. Right. That I mean that layout of the score process. Yeah. Yeah. You're hitting your mark. So we were 
heading out from launch and yeah. decided to share a cab because we were both on the same flight yep. coming back to Colorado and uh, you ended up filming a podcast in your car. Yeah, I was doing a little video blog. Yeah. And, well, while we were there, Dan Miller was just, he was so great. And he just kept saying, you know, like, if more than three people ask you the same questions, it's time to make a product. You know, if someone's saying, how do you and your wife work together so well? If three separate people in three separate locations are asking you the same question, maybe you should do something about that. Right. It sounds like there might be a market for it. And while I was there, I just threw up on my, on my uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash J Ryan Dobson. Um, <clears throat> I just did a Q and a, Hey, I'll do a Q and a, what do you want me to answer? Mm -hmm. And I think I got four responses of where's your podcast. I can't find anything like it. I'm so <laughs> sick of not having your podcast. And now you're not on family talk anymore. Cause I quit my job. And I just thought, well, okay. All right, to start. fine. I'll, you know, and I was already doing videos. And so, um, and then I had a bunch of people asking me about my adoption. I was surprised. A lot of adoption questions. Well, and I thought, let, let's talk about that a little bit because that's what a lot of the people who watch my yeah. podcast are interested in. Adoption, attachment, abandonment, rejection, yep. parenting, those totally. type of questions. And by the way, those are all the questions I got. I I got, um, do you want to meet your birth parents? My sister's adopted and she has no desire. And I don't understand that. Do you struggle with abandonment because of this? Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, all those, those are some, some of the most basic, but everybody has those questions. Right. And I got asked all those questions. So well, it's the questions people don't want to ask, but they want to know. They feel like maybe they're too personal. So I ask well, everything. I don't want to ask. Like, oh, no. I, I, I'm I, like, I'll ask you. <laughs> yeah. I just don't have time for games. I won't be mean, but I'll, I'll, I'll be very honest. Like I'm going right. to, so we're going to air the audio of this on my podcast and I had a couple of people ask questions and I think I might lose a couple fans in the way I answered this. It, but you, come on, you got to be honest. You asked. Hey, if you don't want my answer, and by the way, you should know who I am by now. If you followed me for Tell, any length of well, time. So let's say that my viewers don't know who you are. Yeah. Who are you? Oh, um, I mean, history and background, Ryan Dobson, my dad's James Dobson. He started and founded Focus on the Family. He's now the president of Family Talk. I've written, I always forget, six books? Something like that? More than four. Sure. Uh, <laughs> six books. Uh, I've had uh, a couple of podcasts. I've got a new one called Real Life and Family with Ryan Dobson. Um, so... I was the vice president of broadcast at Family Talk. I ran the broadcast, you know, got guests, prepped guests, helped interview, you know, helped prep my dad for, you know, interviews. You know like media. That. I love it. I, you know, it's funny. I just grew up with it. People always are like, oh, you know, how do you get up on a stage and do that? I watched my dad do it. Right. It just made sense. When well, he got know, up on stage and talked, people listened. I figured, well, they'll listen to me too. And they do. When we met, I didn't know who you were. At first, we were just yeah. kind of hanging out at a but apparently social most people thing. did not and couldn't figure out why because it's about building launch conference about building a platform right. and and they're like right. well, why are you here yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah because I don't have a platform either right you don't just for yourself yeah. and for your message and well, they were, we're saying there... nobody can build your platform for you right and that's essentially what you know what I was doing there. so then I found out that you were Ryan Dobson mm -hmm. and I connected the dots there I did not know you were adopted. Which yeah. I'm an adoptive mother, so we start. We had lots of chats yeah, through the week just totally. about adoption and have you ever wanted to find your birth parents and what was it like being adopted into the Dobson family? Well, sure. tell us about that for just a minute. Um, here's the truthful answer on that. I don't know. It's the only family I grew up in. There's no comparison. Compar yeah, I don't right. have, I don't have any comparisons. People can say, "What's it like to have kids and not have kids?" I can give you that comparison because before, you know, when I was married, I didn't have kids, and now I have kids. It's a different kind of thing. Um, so, I think there's a twofold of being a Dobson and a Dobson. My friend Doug Waring, um, great wordsmith. He's a copy editor at, at uh, Universal. Um, just a gem of a human being. We've known each other since college. And someone asked him if I had any identity issues being adopted. And Doug's response, just off the cuff, was, I think Ryan's had a harder time being a Dobson than he has being adopted. Mm -hmm. And so for me, where most kids struggled with, um, I was abandoned and I don't know who I am and, and all those types of things, um, I didn't know who I was because of the expectations placed upon me because of who my parents were. And right. I don't mean that to be a pity party. It, 
I str- I've struggled greatly with it, but um, that for me was far more overwhelming. Right. You know, my dad uh, started focusing on the family in 76 when I was six. Uh, in 79, he released the Focus on the Family film series. Hmm. By the mid 80s, 100 million people worldwide had seen it. <laughs> One in three Americans had seen it. One in three. So, sixth grade is when my world exploded. And I just didn't know it. I, mm-hmm. Because there was, and here's the other thing too that people don't understand. My parents didn't know it either. They weren't prepared for it. They didn't ask right. for it. They weren't expecting it. In fact, the opposite is true. If you want the history of Focus on the Family, Um, And my dad's ministry, he was trying to do what his dad did when he was in high school and having a little trouble. Nothing major, just a little trouble. His dad quit traveling to speak and stayed home. Mm -hmm. And when my dad was early in his career, he was speaking all the time. I mean, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't say, uh, you know, yes to enough events. Mm -hmm. And his dad said, at the end of your life, none of this is going to matter if you lose your kids. And... He was deciding between TV and radio, and TV would have kept him out of the house more. Mm. And he decided on radio, and he decided to film his last speaking event, and he canceled the rest of his speaking events. His dad did the same thing when he decided to come home. He canceled four years of events. My dad canceled about a year of events. Mm. He hadn't booked that far out, but a year is a long time. Yeah, Canceled all of them, filmed his very last conference... And then they turned that into the first ever. No one had ever done a video series before. Hmm. That was the very first one. And it exploded his career, but it could have backfired. His publisher said, This is this is death. suicide. Yeah. It's death. You're gonna no one is gonna sit in a room and watch a guy on a stage. No one's gonna do that. Somebody else will come here and do it live. No one's gonna watch you on a screen. And he was like, Well, then no one will watch me and I'll still stay home. But <laughs> This is what I'm going to do anyway. Right. And it, I mean, 100 million people. 100 million people is craziness. So, um, I've told it before, but briefly. Sixth grade substitute teacher, Colleen Roll, got to my name, Ryan Dobson. I said, here. She goes, oh, like Dr. James Dobson. And I go, well, yeah, that's my dad. And she goes, oh, honey, I know you wish he was. And she kept calling Roll. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> I, she didn't believe you. Well, I just didn't know, like, <laughs> I, to me, he was just my dad right so it didn't make any sense oh, for you to be like who he was right yeah i don't have any and and then all of my friends in class were like it is his dad it is his dad and i was like what why does everyone know who my dad is and then she got really embarrassed that didn't make any sense to me and i was like One of these things is not like the other. And I was like, I'm the odd man out. What's going on? And then the next day, when I showed up for class, substitute teacher's still there, she brought a a stack of books in for me to bring home for him to autograph. Oh, And I was like, (laughs) this is weird. What does this mean? Yeah, it it didn't make any, I had no, I had really no no background, nothing to bounce that off of. And I brought it home and he was like, oh yeah, of course, what's your name? You know, no problem at all. And I was like, oh, this is weird. I brought it back and she was so thrilled what so and then um nobody knew the radio broadcast was pre-recorded they weren't saying it was live but everybody just assumed it was live right. and so then i would have students and parents and teachers that had heard the broadcast on their way to school in carpool talking to me about what they had heard in the car whether I, you know like my dad talked about playing tetherball when he was a teacher and, and getting a broken nose a kid a girl hit a tetherball into his face and it broke his nose. And I had all these people like, how's your dad's nose? Is he okay? You know, what's going on? And, and I was like, what are you talking about? His nose is fine. And by the way, the story was a decade or more old, you know. Um, but yeah, we got famous. It was weird. It was super weird. There's no way to, t- there's no way to describe it unless you've been in it, you know, for a good, maybe a close to a decade we didn't ever eat a meal out and not get interrupted, you know? Wow. Like, it was just... Now, did you... I, I'm sure that a lot of the comments were positive. Oh, but all of them were positive. I mean, did seriously... Did you ever get... I mean, like... Three... I mean, oh, seriously. Really? People are not rude, and they have not been. I mean, I've... I've, I can think of a couple that have happened. My dad's had it happen a couple more times than that. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like, 
no, people are super cool about it. Um, but there was that expectation. You know, people always ask, what's the most common question you've been asked? Uh, first one is, what's it like being raised at Opsum? Second one, what do your parents think about X? Mm. Well, you wear a lot of black. What do your parents think about that? You ride a skateboard. What do your parents think about that? Your hair is cut interestingly. What do your parents think about that? You have tattoos. What do your parents think about that? You got your ears pierced. What do your parents think about that? That question. But growing up, you know, when my parents bought my skateboard, I think they think it's okay. My mom <laughs> takes me to the barber and tells him how to cut my hair. I, <laughs> she cut it for me. They buy my clothes. I'm 12. What do you know? But that, what that, honestly, for me, and I've really dealt with it a lot in the last couple of years. What it said was, you're doing something I'm not sure I think is right. Right. I don't know. Thinking I know your parents the way I think I do. Based on their public persona. Are they hypocrites? Are you bad? Well, you know, it's whatever. interesting. I was talking to somebody the other day about filming this with you. Yeah. And their immediate question was... Oh, so was it really the way they said it was and told everybody else how to live their lives in his home? Or were they basically, oh my gosh. were they hypocrites? No. <laughs> oh my goodness. People always want to know that. What are my parents like? Exactly like they are on air or, or on stage or in person. I promise you. They are. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm different. I'm not drastically different, but I'm just different. Uh, when I'm on stage, it, it's it's not a character, but it's it's... I have to separate my public and my private. I don't know how to do that. My dad's public and private is identical. He's the same guy. Yes, they practice what they... I mean, I can... I have a million stories on that. I I, used, I lived in Manitou Springs in between colleges. I went to my first college. I went to Olivet Nazarene University. Great university. I screwed around, got terrible grades. Uh, and my parents... My dad just said... And he's really nonchalant about it. You know, my parents... People always ask if my parents were strict when I was growing up. No. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. And I'm more like my parents were now. With Lincoln, when he was born, I was a militant. I was a tyrant. Terrible. I was so ultra, way stricter than my parents. My parents weren't strict at all. But my dad just said when I was in college, Ryan, this isn't my money. It's God's money. The people, you know, he doesn't, he never, he's never taken a salary, but people that buy his books, you know, he's uh -huh. like, this is God's money. I can't waste it. If you make me waste it, I'll take you out of school. And I just didn't think he was serious. Well, he kicked me out. School didn't kick me out. My grades weren't bad enough to get kicked out of school academically. But my parents just said, we're not going to waste God's money. Find a place to live. And I moved into this horrible cottage in Manitou. I had a terrible job. It was a huge, huge eye-opener. But for them, I'm an adult now. How embarrassing. James <laughs> Dobson, you know, mega ministry, son going nowhere. Like, <laughs> literally, you know, he's at a board. Hey, how are the kids? Oh, Danae? Yeah, she's written her, uh, you know, 15th book and graduated college. And, you know, she's doing fantastic. How's Ryan? Oh. <laughs> we love Ryan. R Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Danae, though, she's... <laughs> I mean, what do you say? He got crappy grades in college and we had to kick him out. And he's living in a tiny, you know, 200 square foot cabin. I mean, it was, oh, it was just squalor. But they did the right thing. We've joked at different times because parents who are really struggling with kids, yeah. we've talked about like, what do you write in your Christmas letter? You know? Oh, <laughs> wouldn't oh it be my fun gosh. to have an honest Christmas I letter? <laughs> we get so many Christmas letters. They're not going to know. We, I mean, we get so many Christmas letters. But there is a family, and I know actually what's going on, and I love reading their Christmas letter because you can read between the lines a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You know, I'm not going to air out my kids' dirty laundry for <laughs> right. sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm just a, I'm whatever Be I'm honest. honest. Yeah. Be honest. Totally. Well, hey, are you willing to stick around yes, and talk some more? Totally. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us here on Broken and Brilliant. We'll see you next time.